The federal government has called for the support and understanding of the international community in bringing an end to the NSAS protests across the country. The Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyema, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, and the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Zubairu Bada. Daba, Dada, I beg your pardon, while briefing members of the diplomatic corps in Abuja, says that the federal government has made a commitment to address the demands made by the protesting youths. They say they are worried that the protests have spiraled out of control and taken a new dimension which has been hijacked by hoodlins and thugs. The president, down to the executive heads of all the states, uh, the inspector general of police, federal level and at the state level have embraced the demands of the uh, NSAS uh, uh, movement and have moved, are moving very quickly towards the uh, implementation of, uh, of that. And that is the federal uh, government's response. The demands they came with SARS have been met. But now we have some people who are not part of the original movement now using this movement to ask for unreasonable demands from stops from answers you now hear and worry and this is what troubles the government and SARS and similar agitations not only in nigeria all over the world are things that do happen. But what is important is what is the role and the response of government. This government has shown that it is a responsible and responsive government. Responsible because it listened to these demands. Responsive because it has answered all of the demands. But, Your Excellencies, it is not part of freedom to break open prison, to ban police stations, to destroy public order, to block roads and cause mayhem, to destroy both public and private properties. And this government is very willing to continue to listen to agitations and to respond to those agitations that are responsible, fair, because it has the responsibility of looking after 200 million people. The government of Nigeria has been very responsive. It has listened. And not only has it listened, it has resolved to act and to act fast. Therefore, I strongly appeal to them to please give peace a chance while the ovation is longest. To share his thoughts on the latest development with the NSAS protest, we are joined by international human rights lawyer Oludayo Fagwemi. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on the news this morning. Uh, straight up, I'm going to ask you, um, what is the implication uh, of the crackdown we saw last night? Um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, last night's events were very sad. It's, it's a new law in the history of Nigeria. On no account, for no reason, should government open fire on peaceful protesters who were sitting down reciting the national anthem. It is very sad. And um, th this uh, crackdown shows that the, the, the first statements that came from government committing to comply with the demands of protesters was, was not genuine. It, it's fake. Um, international law is clear on the rights of uh, citizens to protest against the government. It is clear uh, on the duties of the government to protect the lives of people and not to use uh, lethal force arbitrarily without good reason. Um, this is a new law. It is, it is a sad day for Nigeria. 
I, I want to ask you, earlier uh, on this morning, we spoke to O'Connell who was saying that sometimes uh, this kind of force might become necessary. Uh, as somebody who has worked with um, um, international community, can the action be justified on the grounds that the protest was banned by the police? Not at all, no. Um, international law has rules, international human rights law provides rules for when um, the state can use lethal force. And uh, such lethal force must be used only as a means of last resort after every other thing has failed and only for the purpose of protecting the lives of other people or important pieces of property, for instance. But in a situation where people were peaceful, where they were sitting, where they caused no a threat to the life of or to the lives of other people. Um, there's no excuse at all for using legal force, like like we saw last night. Um, there's no excuse under international law for that. And in fact, I go ahead to argue that the killings last night reached the threshold required for investigations into crimes against humanity under the uh, Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. Uh, what would be the time frame for such an investigation to produce a report that will be implemented? What should be the ideal uh, time frame considering um, the continuous nature of the protest? I, I'm, I didn't get your question very well. There were some breaks. I'm, I'm asking you, you, you said um, for actions to be taken. I'm asking, for, you said for action, that's investigation to be undertaken, that what happened last night requires that. I'm asking now, what would be the ideal time frame for that investigation to be conducted and reports unveiled? The government of Nigeria has a duty to investigate those killings uh, within a very, you know, uh, so we need an expedited investigation. And uh, under the rules that will be international criminal court or other such international bodies can only step in if the Nigerian government does not investigate and if they are unwilling and unable to prosecute those who committed the crimes we saw last night. So uh, I can't say there's a specific time frame. But the government has to be quick in investigating uh, these, these, these killings. And not only do they have to be quick, but they also have to be transparent. The investigations have to be seen by everybody to be fair and, and impartial. So we can't have the same military um, personnel who kill people investigating themselves. That would be unfair. That would be partial hot-blooded Nigerians that are saying uh, the video is enough evidence that no investigation is required. All uh, the international community needs to do is look at the videos that show that indeed um, some military people were shooting at unarmed protesters. What would you say to them? Fair. Uh, but as you know, that, that two things I need to say here um, international law does not take the place of national law until the national law fails. So in this instance, the, the United Nations, the International Criminal Court, other international human rights mechanisms will not step in until the Nigerian government has shown that it is not willing or is not able to carry out effective investigations and prosecutions. The videos are a good start for the Nigerian government to start to look into, you know, uh, identifiable military officials and uh, identifiable chain of command. So we would want to know, for instance, who gave the order for these soldiers to go and confront protesters. Uh, in, in, in a democracy like ours, there is no place for the military on the streets to confront peaceful protesters. So those are questions the government needs to start answering now. Uh, and if, if they fail to answer that, then, you know, um, the ground, the, the, the gates will be open for the international community to step in. I'll let you go. What would be your legal advice to victims um, for those that have been injured, those whose um, um, relatives have died in the protest? What advice would you give to them? Um, so, first of all, like I said earlier, the government has a duty to investigate and prosecute the offenders. But secondly, the government also has a duty to compensate 
the direct and indirect victims. So not only people who were injured last night, but relatives of people who have been who have been shot and killed. And so I would advise them um, prepare your evidence, uh, gather everything you can gather. These videos are a good starting point. A lot of human rights NGOs have been compiling the evidence. Let's do a court case, uh, both in the local courts and uh, also I would suggest the ECOWAS court. Let's get uh, a remedy for all these crimes committed by government agents. Just what you were, um, uh, sorry, just what you were saying, it, it does worry me that uh, it is the victim that has to uh, provide evidence of a crime that was committed against uh, him or her. How, does, how can you explain that in 30 seconds, if you can? Uh, in, in, in law, it is he who brings the case, who has to prove the case. So the person bringing the case has to supply the evidence. But in this case, the evidence is widely available. All of us saw these videos last night. The evidence, the evidence is right there on the internet waiting for whoever cares. And so this is not a difficult thing to gather at all. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Oludayo Fagwemi, for speaking to us on the news. Thank you very much for having me. It's our pleasure.